It is my great honor to welcome back Julia Cannon. Julia will share a never before heard antidotes about Dolores, providing us with a unique and intimate glimpse into the life of this extraordinary woman. It always feels like ages since we caught up last, <laughs> even though it's, it's, it's always about a month, but it always feels so, so long. Um, what are you getting the sense of at the moment? I know a lot of people are, are talking about they're experiencing a lot of change in their life and that can be very uncomfortable for people. Right. Are you observing that around you, with you? <laughs> <laughs> with me? Um, you know, it, there is, there's an energy of something. It's like new, new things or, or growing things, things like that, um, expanding, whatever. Um, and maybe it's the season. Although in Australia, you're coming you're going the other direction, but here it's like, everything's growing. It's just sprouting. It's so beautiful in spring, you know? And so I always feel like sometimes that's a renewal and that's when we feel those things. And maybe it's some of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I think there's been some planetary things going on um, that have caused, you know, there are probably a significant shift. And I've heard of people talking about that, how they felt it internally. They didn't even realize there was something happening and they knew you know, they were just something shifted within them. So, and there was this major planetary shift that we've been looking for, apparently, you know, the one, you know, the Aquarius one, <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. Okay. It happened. I didn't even know about it. <laughs> so that can be some of this. We're feeling it. We're much more sensitive now to these things. So we're feeling when these major things happen, especially things that we've been looking for, you know, waiting for things like that. But, um, yeah, it's, and maybe that's it, you know, as I, cause I have, I've had that feeling too. Something's, you know, about to happen. Something's about to change something, whatever, but maybe it's just that it's an overall, some of the same stuff. It's just shifting energies. Yeah. And it could be challenging as well. I know I, I, I speak to a lot of people myself. I think we love the idea of change, right? Everyone loves Absolutely. the idea. I of want it, I want it, I want it. <laughs> But when you rephrase that, do you want to change? <laughs> Suddenly right. everyone becomes <laughs> or tends to become hesitant because I, I think it challenges us, you know, and, and people are afraid sometimes of the unknown and change-ing represents sometimes the unknown, doesn't it? Right. Well, you know, there's that old saying, um, I want to, I'll stay with the devil I know rather than go with yeah. the angel I don't know, you know, and that's it. And that's what change represents. It's like, I have to leave my comfort zone and yeah. what I've known, what I'm so comfortable with, even though I may hate it and I really want something different. And that's the thing we said, I want, I want, I want this, I want this other thing. And then it starts shifting into that. And we realize, oh my gosh, that means everything changes. Oh, hello. <laughs> that's what you wanted. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, you have to change. The world has to change. Your environment changes. The environment you're currently in supports the environment you're currently in, the situation you're currently in. If you want a new situation, then things must change. The environment, your thoughts, your being changes to support it. Mm. It can't be any other way. Yeah, really well said. And I find with people, I see this all the time with people, they often don't follow through. They might pick up a book to read or start a course, and then they don't finish it. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people, I don't know if it's particularly people in the spiritual community or just yeah. people at large, but so many people start and they don't finish what they start. Okay. I think there's a couple of things there. Um, I think one, it may, it may not be in alignment with them. Mm. And they're, they're, it's, it's like, it's not, I mean, I've done that recently. I started several things and it's like, it's close. I mean, I can feel it's close, but it's not quite there. Now, it's close, but it's not quite there. And then finally, it, it, but it, they led me to the one that's, that's it. Okay. So it could be, it's just not quite it yet, or you're not ready for it yet or something, but it's there and it's presenting itself. It may be a stepping stone to something else, or it may be it's there waiting for you to work on yourself a little bit or something. It's just, mm. See, there's things that are not quite in place yet. They're not I think, on shelf. I think that's a really good point. Sometimes we're not ready for it yet. Yes. 
And a lot of people get disappointed, don't they? Because they feel like maybe there's great things for them in life. And they have that yeah. sense. They have almost a knowingness around it. And when they don't sort of see that coming to fruition, they often get yeah. discouraged thinking, right. okay, it's not going to be. And then they get into doubt and maybe yeah. they give up or something like that. But right. often I think it's a timing thing, right? Timing's it's, everything. Timing's everything. Um but don't let that discourage you. Just like you just always be doing something. I've started a new thing and I and someone else taught me this, but it's like I'm actually applying it now. It's like if I can do one thing toward my goal, and I may have a bunch of different ones. So if I can make one step on each one every day, success, you, you're one step closer. One step is something I can comprehend. Except usually we're like, oh, I have to make this great big giant move. If I can make one little move, just any move in the direction that I want to go, you will eventually get there. And see, and that's helping you to see. It's like it, these long-term things. These are long-term visions. We go in as you want something grand for your life. That's a long-term vision. You have to have that kind of view. You can't go, oh, I want this wonderful thing and it's not happening right this second. So, oh, gee, you know, I'm giving up on it. And that's probably the biggest thing. Just don't give up. You're giving up on yourself when you do that. This may not be quite it, but it may be a stepping stone. Like I said, use it and do something. Make one move, at least one move a day toward whatever it is you're going for. Mm -hmm. It then reminds me of that great quote. quote. Yeah, then Remind you're always going forward. <laughs> that's it. And mm -hmm. reminds me of that great, great quote of your mother's that, you know, she said, basically, you know, if you give up, you'll never know what you could have achieved. You'll never know. Exactly. Exactly. And so many of us do fall into that category at one time in our life or another. We just, we, 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 we don't have the, the tenacity to stick with something. And, right. I and that yeah, exactly. Right. And, but I think you also have to have the willingness to realize that something might not be right for you. And so, and, and thank yourself for knowing that that's not right. You know, it's like, it doesn't, if it doesn't feel right, don't stick with it, go to something else. But like I said, it could be a stepping stone. Um, a lot of these courses, not mine, but a lot of them, <laughs> they, you know, they have their list that they sell to other people and then they get your name. And so because you purchase this one, then you'll be on a list for somebody else and that'll move you. See, that's how other, you get moved and eventually you might find what it is, you know, you're going to be guided. Follow, listen to your guidance. Listen to your gut. It will tell you if something feels right or not. If it doesn't, let it go. Mm. If it does, work toward it. This stuff does, you know, we think it's going to just happen miraculously. Oh, it's just going to be, I can think and everything. No, manifesting still takes work. That's that, that's that effort we put in. That's why I say if you just do one move, at least one move every day toward it. See, that's what you have to put in. You've got to put in the effort. It's not going to just appear, but it will appear if you do the effort. Mm. If you don't quit. Yeah, to be it's a big lesson for people is just to to, to stick with something. Yeah. I've always found that, you know, if something is worth having in life, it doesn't come easy. I don't know about you, but I, I think the things that have been worth having in my life, they've come with a lot of sacrifice, a lot of not giving up. Um, and it's easy for people to, you know, they look at maybe one success and say, oh, it's easy for that person. It's easy for that person. But I've actually found that those people that we call successful have actually put a lot into place to make that happen for themselves consistency and not giving up and you know yeah. oh yeah mom used to say you know these people were at toward the end of her life and they were saying no they just discovered her and she's like yeah you know somebody an overnight success she goes yeah an overnight success it took 40 years to get here you know and, like, <laughs> that's, and that's, that's exactly how it is you know you're you're doing stuff. Nobody sees all the trials and tribulations and all the times you almost gave up and you, you know, like I'm your mom, you know, she, after another rejection letter, she got, you know, from when she was trying to get her first book published and, and she just, she threw everything against the wall and she's like, I give up. I can't do this anymore. I can't take this anymore. 
And she's like, that's it. But then she sat down and said, well, okay, so then what are you going to do? If you don't do that, then what are you going to do? She's mm. like, oh, I love writing. I can't, can't think of anything else I'd rather do. So she's like, okay, I guess I'll just, so she had to pull herself back up by her bootstraps. And then she put out another one, put out this, and look where she is. And seeing overnight success. <laughs> well, I always, I, I love that you brought up your mother because I always look to her as inspiration. And when I think about, you know, something may not be happening quick enough that I would like it to, I think about her journey and her life and how, you know, for most of it, she didn't experience that grand success that we know of her now. Yeah. She was getting the rejection letters. No one wanted to publish her early work because people weren't ready or open for the information. I didn't understand. <laughs> and when, you know, do you remember when she started her lectures and speaking? I mean, do you remember what, because I think a lot of people assume that there were thousands of people at these uh, lectures of, and obviously toward the end of her life that the audiences grew, but when she started, do you remember the, the, the size of the people that were there, the crowd? Yeah, I, I wasn't there. I mean, I was on my own career and everything, but I would hear about it. And mm. I think there were just little gatherings. Yeah. You know, 10, 15 people, maybe. They were just yeah. little local things. And then they started growing. As she has her book started coming out, then they started growing. When she went to other countries, uh, then they were getting larger because, you know, they were, because the books were published in, in England, I think, first. See, so they were, she was more well known over there mm. first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, because she, you, they, I don't know. Do, do they still have a London office where they, where the publisher is? I know they did at one point. We had it was like an outreach or a sister kind of thing. It was yeah. just we were trying to put arms out there, you know, to help us. It was mainly with the yeah, it was the publishing because we didn't have books and areas to be distributing. But now, now we have Amazon. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's so and, easy and now. We, yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of, we were kind of an early thought of that. It was like, we could have distributing outlets, you know, in these different countries. Mm. And now we don't need you. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're having this conversation because I think it's so it's so relevant to a lot of people that might be a, you know, QHHT practitioner or someone that's on the spiritual path that, that, that is putting out, maybe they're thinking about writing a book or they're thinking about running a group regression, perhaps. I know a lot of practitioners are doing that or whatever it is. I think it's encouraging to know that even your mother started really, really small, you know, 15 people groups. And then as she became more well-known, as she wrote more books, then it expanded out. Uh, it's encouraging because often we can feel really insignificant, you know, if we don't have a large uh, following or social media as people have today, they can get discouraged. I think it's really important that people don't give up, that they keep yeah. at it like your mother did. Yeah. And, and she didn't really look once in a while she would go or she didn't understand. So it was really social media was just kind of beginning or maybe it wasn't but it was seemed like it was it was in its early years at that point and um um so she would just go on once in a while she googled herself and she was just like what <laughs> you know but <laughs> normally no you just do your work you know she was just doing her thing and i think what came as the biggest revelation was toward the end when she started having these larger classes people from all over the world that's when it was going what happened, you know, cause she was just doing her thing and teaching and doing all, then all these people just keep coming and coming. And she's like, and she said, did I do that? <laughs> what happened here? And it's like, yeah, this is from you. And that's what I always want people to know is just keep your head, do your thing. Don't worry about what kind of attention you're getting for it. Don't worry about any of that. Just do what's in your heart to do, do what's right for you. The rest will come. And that's just a natural byproduct of it. You will get attention. You will get whatever. It will just happen. But you've got to be true to yourself. You mm. have to always be in this place. Don't worry about any of that because that's when you get distracted. I think if you're worrying about what kind of attention you're getting and, oh, I didn't get likes. They didn't like me, whatever. Don't just do your thing. But people get, tend to really buy into that. I mean, in this day and age, you know, as you, as you were saying, your mother 
wasn't sort of around for obviously she was probably at the beginning of social media, but now it's obviously taken off to the point where a lot of our lives are so um, intertwined with mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok now, YouTube. And we're, it, it's important to remember that our self-worth does not, isn't derived from these things, but we can get caught in the, in the trap, can't we? Absolutely. It's so easy, but that's where just always remind yourself what it is. You know, it, it's so easy to get sucked in. It, it's like a trap. It's like a this this black hole that you get sucked into. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've lost hours just getting caught up in whatever <laughs> these little thing. Whatever. What are they calling the shorts on on Facebook? The little yeah, the and the, stuff the like reels. That. Yeah. Sucked down into that, and I'm like, oh, hours will go by. Like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. That no, I'm not doing that. So I just have to. I have to set it down. I have to make boundaries with myself and set limitations. It's like, no, that's that's not what I'm here to do. That's not what I'm here to be. Is just a consumer of this, you know, of this information. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It's out there, but that's I have other things. I know that I'm supposed to be doing, and that to me doesn't. So I hope that I hope Facebook doesn't shut me down. <laughs> like ah you're speaking bad about us but yeah, it's like I I know. It's, no, I mean, it's no different than tv it's no different than these other things that we use to distract ourselves and mm. and that's what it is it's just realizing it for what it is and then putting limitations around yourself on that as far as you know okay i, I will do this this is fine but i need to con be constructive about it as to how i will use it not let it consume all of my time because mm. when i saw hours went by that was that was shocking to me how fast I could lose that much time. Well, believe you me, you're not alone in what you just said. I think a lot of people are going to be relating to you right now because they <laughs> got taken down the same path yeah. With, yeah. with this stuff. And you know what? It's actually designed, Silicon Valley designed these apps to, to do this very thing, to keep you on the platform, to keep you engaging in the content. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so it works <laughs> and it does you know well this is where awareness is so important because when we're aware of something suddenly we're already starting to detach from it the awareness creates the detachment yeah. when i think about just what you were sharing then what advice or what wisdom did your mother leave or impart with you that you can think about that left the most impression on you you know there was something that happened to me this is something it's going to be unexpected I think but I think it's it's been coming to my mind recently and I think it's a really good piece of advice because it shows that you have choices there was something that really bad in my opinion really bad happened to me and I was going down this I had to go through this and at the point that we're at this point, I have to do this. Um, my mother looked at me and she's like, because, you know, we we're there and she had to leave. And she's like, okay, just don't let it make you bitter. Mm. And that just stayed with me because it was a situation that I could have been very bitter. And many people that were there were very bitter. And I'm like, but see, that showed me because she said that. That was the last thing she said to me. I was like, okay, I... I will, I, I can choose how I look at things. I can choose how, and I did everything I looked at. I looked at in a way so that I would not be bitter. Mm. And I had to be, I had to keep noticing that. We'll see. And I, that keeps coming up because we have a lot, we always have things going on and we always have choices about how we want to look at it. Mm. How do you want to look at your life? How do you want to look at a situation? How do you want to look at anything? Just don't let it make you bitter. Yeah, Simple. it's a it it makes I mean your mother spoke a lot about forgiveness. And mm -hmm. I've shared with people before, actually the reason I forgave one of my parents for wronging me in my early childhood was listening to your mother. And I was walking through a park one day, I was listening to her on the headphones and she was talking about forgiveness and she said it in such a Laura's canon way that just spoke straight to me when I mean I've heard the message before but when she said it she said it with conviction and it 
really penetrated me, my mind and my heart at the time. And she said, you just got to have to forgive. And I made a decision when I was in that park that day that I was going to do that. And that set me down a trajectory where everything changed, Yes, you know, but I, I, and I think it's exactly the same for you because I mean, I'm guessing you were wronged by somebody during that event and you could have held on to that. And then that would have led you, it could have, I mean, we see it with soul speak, it can lead to illness. Uh, So many different things can manifest as messages to get us to wake up to the fact. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all that, but it keeps coming down to you have choices. You know, people, well, they did me wrong. And like, but you have the choice whether to hold on to that or to forgive. Forgive does not mean forget. And mm. that's for some people, it means I that's have to good... let them off the hook. You know, no, it just, you're, you're forgiving what happened here. You're forgiving your part in it. You're forgiving that. You're not forgetting it. So that doesn't mean, oh, you go jump right back into whatever with that person or what the event or anything. You're remembering that to teach you. You're learning something from it, but you're forgiving yourself and the players for the parts they played. Because on a soul level, this is an agreement we made to learn from. Mm. So why do you, why do you yeah. think on a soul level, I mean, obviously I don't need you to go into your particular situation, but for you, as you uh, reflect on that event, why do you think you created that in your life or what did you choose that as a lesson? I think there were several things. I had to change course and I wasn't listening. I was getting messages. Uh, I wasn't yeah. listening. Okay. And so it was like, we got, you know, you have to, this is the only way to pluck you out of that beautiful comfort zone that you're in. <laughs> it's like, we just we got to jerk you out and, and, and make you go. I was, it was like a very important point. I had to do it. I can see looking back when I look at like, when you look at your life maze kind of thing, or the, the path you were on, if I would have continued down, it's like, there's a point of no return. You have to, you have to shift at that point. I wasn't doing it. I wasn't listening. I wasn't, it was like, I was stubbornly going to stay. And they're like, okay, well then, and I asked, you know, how are you? Cause they were saying, you have to do this. You got to go. I heard that, but I was being cocky. And I'm like, how? how in the world am I going to go do that? And it was like, well, we'll show you how. And so that's what, you know, <laughs> and then I was <laughs> you know, freaking out because <laughs> everything is changing. But um, as far as learning, so I feel like that was the reason for that. Now, as far as what I, through the process, it ends up now that was a fantastic experience to go through because I grew so much mm-hmm. Um spiritually physically mentally everything i saw the strength i have i saw the fortitude that i have i saw that i can go through things and be fine Mm. you know and and come out you know i'm and grow and and stuff it was a challenge talk i mean it was very challenging i'm not shortcutting that it was hard it was um it's something from time to time I still deal with as far as my, my view of myself, because it has mm. ramifications like psychological ramifications, you know, mm. Oh, you're not a good person, that kind of thing, you know? Mm. And it's like, so that's my own stuff that I'm learning, still learning from. It's like, we can have, you know, cause that was a thought that I had like only, you know, good people don't have bad things happen. So that mm. must mean that I'm not a good person, but I really thought I was a good person and see how that kind of messes with your brain a little bit. And that's where we have to realize, no, things happen. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad, things happen. And we chose those things to learn from. Mm. Now, as far as what I might be, uh, what I learned from it, like I said, I grew so much. I learned how to adapt. I learned how strong, how I can be strong. I learned how I can be creative. I learned how I can uh, uh, work with probably any kind of person. I learned how diverse I am. I learned magical, wonderful things about myself. Mm. Incredible. And I could get through it. <laughs> so, and sometimes you know. it's the, the hardest things in life. You know, I went through a a thing that lasted six years. It was actually a legal situation that. Mm-hmm. I had to resolve and it, it was, 
a very, very long term thing over like five years. And yeah. when it finally concluded, um, it was almost like I felt like it because it may it woke me up. This is how I had my spiritual awakening. Often I say, you know, we we generally wake up through suffering, right? Yeah, it someone has to grab you up. by the collar and shake you. <laughs> And, and exactly. And then when I was out of that situation, all that pressure wasn't there anymore. And then suddenly it's easy to get a little bit slack around, you know, meditation's not as important anymore, or I'm not going to push in as hard, or I'm not going to really need this. So there was kind of this adjustment period of this situation was forcing me, um, it was a lifeline, you know, I needed the spirituality. It was everything because it was getting me through moment by, by moment. Exactly. Um, did you feel that when you obviously, you know, that situation, you moved through it, did you feel like there was a sense of maybe yeah. loss of, of that? Um, yeah. Cause I had that situation. Then I've recently had another one. And since you're mentioning, and so it's like that, and that's when you go to those core principles is the things yeah. that, you know, you go to those things and that is your lifeline to get you through. Now, here's something that I have found. It's like when that pressure lessens and it lightens up, there's a, a thing because you get used to that pressure cooker and you get used to all the, the holding on and, and being very focused on like this is this time i'm on manifesting and things like that i'm being more conscious in there it's like okay and watching my thoughts and, and and being very mindful and what i'm doing here and being very um participatory whatever you want i don't know the words but um to co-create my situation it's like okay I'm moving it through it I'm, I'm shifting things and then it's like okay when it lightens up and you're seeing, oh my gosh, yeah, what I've been working toward is happening. This is fantastic. Then it's like, there's something that's a tendency to, because you get used to that pressure cooker. You almost, there's maybe kind of a tendency to create something else that because you're used to that feeling. And it was like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. We we like this. We want to go this way now, you know, because that, that can be a tendency. So I want, I want you to be mindful that, that's what you might because this is again the devil that you know mm. the pressure cooker you hate it but it's what you know and you made the freedom feeling is a little too free and it's like oh, i don't know what to do with this you know this lightness oh my gosh you gotta be working on this to work yourself through that and again mm. you know, it's okay just be mindful that you're the one that created both of these and you're choosing which one you're going to stay with yeah. And, you know, it reminds us of that whole principle. There's no good or bad, just right. positive energy, negative energy. You know, we can, we, we get so much liberation. I think when we accept that at least in our life, because then all of this stuff that we derive so much, Oh, she's good or she's bad, or he's good or bad. We can just really let that go and then go, okay, it's just lessons. It's just lessons for my growth. And, and for you, obviously, this really served to probably put you into the position you are today. You probably maybe wouldn't have been ready for this if you hadn't gone through that. Maybe. Who knows? You're, you're, no, you're probably right. And I have thought of that. I have thought mm. about that. It's like, this has all been preparing me. You yeah. Know, the, you know, to, then, to know that I can go through these things, to know that they're tough. And then I, and you come out the other side, then see, that gives you huge hope. You always know that there's something. Whereas if you've not gone through that and you're in the middle of it or something, you don't necessarily know that. And you're like, yeah. and that's when you want to give up. You want to, you know, I don't know what to do here, but if, if those of us that have been through these things can help guide people there, you will come out of it. You will get through it. And when you do, then, then that's a roadmap for yourself for anything else that happens. But it does, it makes you stronger. You know, it, it builds your character. I remember when I was, gosh, um, in my twenties maybe, and I would listen to these motivational tapes and, and listening, I was in Amway. Okay. And they, uh, they really, you know, they're uh, about rewiring your brain. Oh, you were in, in Amway. I had family members in Amway. <laughs> <laughs> And so, but I love, I love that. I love that inspirational stuff, that talking you know, and they would do and everything. And, um, 
and they I remember one thing said something about um just remember it's not anything you're going through it's it's building character and it's helping prepare you for other things and i remember thinking man see that's when i didn't understand this stuff and i was like oh shoot what does that mean it's coming because i was going through a tough time i'm like what's well, coming down the road <laughs> <laughs> rather than now i look at okay i'm getting stronger i'm building character i'm building more yeah we're growing and expanding i still want sometimes when i look okay what's coming but i don't do it with this, such devastation it's like there's stuff coming but i can handle it you know i'll i've been through a lot of stuff <laughs> so mm. you know not that i'm asking for more stuff but mm. i can I can deal with it. I can handle it. We all can. We are all strong. You'd have, this is, believe in yourself. You can do this. You're never given more than you can handle. Yeah. I love someone, that saying. I love that. Someone, I think that is so yeah. true. Someone really got upset with me for saying that. Um, and they said, well, what about these people that committed suicide? That was apparently more than they could handle. Mm. And it's like, that's an interesting, you know, they thought it was. Mm. they thought it was and that's why they did that i don't like to go this direction but i want it we're never given more than we can handle there was always if you will wait one more minute one more anything there is a way out there's something that will shift it's just we are pushed to our limits many times Ooh, but that's yeah. building us we do that to ourselves it's not done to us and i think that's why we feel like I can't take it. I can't take it. I'm the victim. You know, I'm be I just keep being beaten up. We think it's coming from an external source, like it's being done to us. If we can realize we're the ones doing it, we are choosing to experience these things so that we can learn. Maybe we can learn our limits. We can learn just how strong we are. We can learn, we can bust through these things. When you just shift that one little thought, mm. you change your whole trajectory. Mm you when you know you did it <laughs> it changes it's satisfying as well isn't it how was your mother when you were going through this um you know challenging time in your life was your mother there to really hold your hand and support you did you really feel her strength during this difficult yeah. time in your life yeah absolutely she was a lifeline for me she was always there and uh yeah. you know she just i had to go through it physically by myself but she was there she was always I could call her I could always you know that she was always there and she was yeah <laughs> I mean what was what was obviously and I would imagine she was doing the work that she did at that point what was kind of her advice to you do you recall what sort of you know she, she was basically telling you giving you the reason why it was happening mm, I don't know that we I don't remember that. I think we were questioning that. We weren't to that part in understanding all of this yet yeah. to realize that much of it. I just remember one point I maybe that was part of we were we were talking about it. We were questioning it. We were we would discuss it. See, that's what we did everything. We discussed things. Okay, wonder why this is happening, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And I remember one time sitting down with this group of people. And that was a cross section of people that I wouldn't have ever encountered in my, my nursing career that I was in. And I remember looking at that as like, oh, I think I'm going to be encountering a lot of different people. This is showing me that I can talk to people from all walks of life. I can, you know, I can work with people from all walks of life. So it's, it was exposing me to this different environment. See, and that was like, oh, okay. So I'm going to be doing something with a lot of different people. So that was giving me, see, I was looking for things like that. And that really helps. You're not going, ah, why am I here? I had a lot of that. Why am I here stuff? But, but then I would do moments of that. And that would come from our discussions. It's like, what do you think this is about? And then I would discuss that with her when I get those epiphanies. And, you know, so we had talks like that and that was helping. And uh, I just Im I just imagine you both probably because obviously you had a a real soul connection. The two of you um, probably had plenty of past lives together, a bit of real soul connection. And obviously, she was growing through the experience as well. Right. Absolutely. You know what came to me the other night? I've been watching these movies. Uh, there's you know from uh, like the old time, like the old west and 
um, there was one out, you know, about Scotland and Ireland and things like that. And I remembered about mom, one of mom's lives that she was telling me about. And I don't remember it. She, you know, she had sessions herself with a friend of hers and they, she found out why she was here and their relationship with all of, all of the ones in her family. Okay. And she said that one day in a class and I'm like, what? I don't remember this. Okay. What was, what was our thing? You know, and stuff. And, um, and she said, ours was, we were in, she thinks it was Ireland. I was her son. And I was, I couldn't get along. I was having trouble getting along with the father. You know, it was like the typical father son kind of thing, or, you know, it's like that struggle, power struggle thing. And I just got, I, I was fed up with it. I'm like, I'm leaving for America. And I left and I never came back. She never saw me again. And her heart was broken. And at that time, that when she told me this, this is when I had, you know, we were working and that's how it felt. I felt like I had this duty to her, you know, I was like, I was paying this back. I'm sticking right with you. I'm here by your side. I'm, I'm not leaving. <laughs> and, and so it's like, and I remember at one point I was like, hey, have I paid it back yet? And she's like, yeah, you're good. <laughs> and so, but what was interesting now, this, this is, you know, and this happened to all of us, you know, but here's what was interesting was what came in when I was watching something the other night was I left her in that life and she left me in this life. Mm. I was like, Oh, I hadn't. Yeah. That was the first time I looked at it that way. So, so, but we had this thing going and, uh, but she's still here. I mean, physically she left me and in in her life, she didn't know that, you know, you could still in that other life. She didn't know you still keep contact, even though the person's gone, but, uh, yeah, she's still here, but that's, yeah, we have a connection. Um, ours turned from, it was apparently this karmic thing that we had to work out. We were doing all these things and then it became this other, you know, this mission kind of feel to it. You know, mm. we made this contract to do this work together and then that's what's continuing. It's because everything I do now feels like it's mission. It's, and that all of, all of that changed. It was something else then and then it shifted. Mm. yeah and you know do you get a real clear sense now of what that looks like for you and also you know the, the method that she left us and obviously you know all of the books and all of the 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 material i get asked that question all the time you know what is next how do you you know like and i think that's what five D is all about. I always say this to people. Um, it's the integration stage. It's integrating all of this stuff. And often we don't know, you know, we don't exactly have it, the clear blueprint, but sometimes it's just stepping out into the unknown because I think there's a lot of unknowns, right? Yes. There's a lot of unknowns. That's why like, oh, well, what's going to happen here and here and here? We don't know. Yeah. And we, can, we, we do these sessions to get some light, but even then the, they will, they will say, we can't tell you because we don't even know. They've even said that we don't even know, you know, it's like, it's, it can, it's many probabilities. So it really depends on what we do as humanity. We're as a collective, you know, we're doing this. The future is never written, mm -hmm. you know, it's probabilities and possibilities. So that's what, this is where we're at now. We're the ones creating and so to, as to exactly how it's going to happen, nobody knows. But the biggest thing is people are like, well, they're still waiting for it. And when is it going to happen? And it's like, that's what I feel like we've shifted. And maybe people are wanting mom to be here to tell them, hey, it's already done. Go, go live it. <laughs> and because she's not yeah. here to say that, they yeah. think it's not here yet. But it is here. We are already here. Like I said, it's integration time now. It's figuring out how to work with it, how to do this. How are we, how do we work with the energies that are here? How do we do these things? It only looks like it's still the other one because that's where our thought processes are. Our thoughts are still in 3D. You know, we still have lots of reminders of it. And so we go in there. We're creating all the time. If we will start thinking from a 5D aspect, we will have the world that we are looking for. <laughs> it's it is here already. We have already shifted. Yeah. New Can you slash <laughs> no, you said that wonderfully. I love that bit. 
Can you explain to people that maybe are listening what your understanding and view of, of, of 5D is all about? Because I, I guess there's a lot of misconceptions from people. Yeah, it's it's higher frequency. It's lighter. It's it's more. It's where we are taking accountability for our actions, more for what we do. We are under this. We understand how we are the creators of everything. We've always been the creators. We just didn't know that. We didn't understand that we were operating in this world that was just creating chaos and chaos and chaos because that's what we were we were in. That's what we were thinking. So we're doing that. Well, now we have shifted into the self responsibility. You know for our thoughts or deeds or actions. When I do this, it causes this. Okay, then I want to shift what I do. If I want something different, then I need to change what I think, what I believe, what I do. See, it's those kind of things. And that all of that comes, if you look back 20 years ago, that wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. This was not the way people thought. No, not the way it was. It was like, this is what we need to do. You know, and it was such a foreign concept. Oh my gosh, what we got, you know, and, and if you told somebody they made that shit happen, they're like, uh-uh, not me. I no, no, no. Why would I do that? I would not want to make horrible things happen for myself. That's crazy. But see, now we can we can understand, we can grasp those concepts. It still may, may not be plen- uh, pretty or fun. But we can grasp it. And the more we can grasp it, then the more we can shift and, and move it to what we want. And that's what it's all about. See, now that's what we're learning. It's no longer this karmic debt stuff and all these things. It's it's understanding our role that we play in everything that we create and the roles of others. And it's like, okay, now how do we work this out? What do we do? That's what it means to me. It's lighter, brighter. It's having the world that you want. You're the creator. What do you want? Yeah. And tell that to someone that's not ready to hear it yeah. because I certainly do. <laughs> and you get great <laughs> resistance because often people say, how dare you tell me yeah. that we create our reality? Well, why would exactly. I create That's why this? I used the expletive earlier because that's how they'll come. Ah! <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And that's, I think it's funny. People, they want, okay, when they do are ready to start accepting that they are the creator, I create the good stuff though. You know, I'm, I, I'll, they'll, they'll be willing to accept that one, but the bad stuff, no way I do that. You know, and that's exactly it, you know? And, and some people, when they're not even ready for that, they won't even accept that they created the good stuff. You know, it's mm. like, they still feel like it's done to them, uh, whatever. Um, mm. Gods or something, you know, entities, it's all acting on them. It's yeah. you. <laughs> we well, that's a that is a big day. one. You know, two big ones that I see almost all the time through the comments that I get on um, videos I share or videos of your mother I I share um, is w- one from a lot of conservative Christians, and they just go straight in with the yeah. it's the devil's work. I mean, you've you've heard it all before the devil's Absolutely. work, you know, and and that li- fundamentalist view of of the Bible. Um, but the second one is almost daily that I see. It's always around kids, cancer, illness, and and people get very upset um, with those, particularly those those two areas, and it ends up being arguments with different people online. Um, right, and people, how how could this be? If we're doing this, why why, why would we even create illness? Period. Let alone cancer. And then why babies, why, why are all these things happening? You know what? And then sometimes that's an attack against God to even have those things. But if you look at it, we are all here to have experiences to learn from. And when you look at children, I'll pull the children out. They may look little, but they have great big grown up souls, mm-hmm. great big grown up souls that are coming in here with a plan to have experiences, to learn things from. And when they are done, Every soul that's here, when they are done with whatever it is they wanted to accomplish, they will leave. There's no more reason to be here. You go on and you keep going. So that's why people die. That's why babies die. They came in for maybe one thing, maybe one little thing they wanted to accomplish. And this was planned out before they ever came in. They planned with their parents, with the whole group of the souls that they were going to be working with. And my whole body is buzzing right now. Um, but they came in, they had meetings, 
They all determined, okay, this is what we're going to do. Maybe the parents wanted to learn how, you know, um, uh, how to love at a different level, to have something you love so much be ripped from you to, so they can experience that kind of feeling to grow through. I don't know. Maybe we should, see, we, I don't know why we choose these experiences. These are soul growth things. Mm. These, but we have to, if you look at it as a play, and I had somebody say, I was I'm talking devil stuff when I said, just looking at it as play, you know, but if you look at it that way, and we're all playing our parts, yeah, maybe that can help you remove yourself a little bit from the emotions that are involved in there, because we get very, very emotionally involved in these plays that we're in, you know, and saying we take it all very, very personally. But if we can pull back and look at it, as a play a very grand play and everybody's coming in and playing their parts and when they're done they go off stage they leave mm. yeah. you know it's just we get caught up in it and that's mm. the part that we forget is that it's a play and we're all playing parts and we choose different parts we move around our thing it's like we have discussions before we come in it's like well what would you like to learn i want to learn this how about we help each other you play this part i'll play this part let's see what we can do here you know, and then we get involved. And it's like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> you know, it's it's the. Uh, I grew up a conservative Christian, and uh, you know, we certainly didn't have that view. Yeah. And well, I, I remember, and yeah, and I would just remember thinking, um, you know, just around this concept that God would send people to hell and the literal devil and all of these stuff. And it just never really uh, sat right with me, you know, and particularly you would see, um, you know, it's like, you know, someone shared something really funny the other day on um, social media. They said, you know, a lot of people um, are like, you know, don't, don't listen to government, don't listen to government. But then the same people are like, <laughs> you know, t telling them, doing everything the church is telling them to do. <laughs> we see a lot of that. Um, but a lot of people are being caught up in that system. And I know a lot of people, you know, their next logical step is to find spirituality. Maybe they see a video of your mother and maybe that's the the start of them coming out of that. Um, why do you think people choose that experience? Because a lot of people do that conservative Christianity where they believe in a literal devil and God being a male. Yeah, I well, I think it's just a step, you know, and it's one to where do you want to go? And I'll come in here and, and can, um, will I look further? I don't know specifically what each person's goal might be, but I know like my mother, I mean, we grew up, we went to church every Sunday. She was a Sunday school teacher. We were conservative Christians and, but she was curious. See, that was her mark. She was always curious. And some of the things that they were saying didn't make sense. So she would ask questions and then they started being upset with her for asking questions i bet <laughs> and, um, yeah and so because they said she was challenging them and she was just asking questions it just she just wanted to know and so when her curiosity wasn't met there then that's when she started you know having some other experiences or she would just have it, she would just gradually let away i mean when she started when she and my father started delving into the reincarnation then they kind of kicked her out but <laughs> Oh, I was yeah. going to say that would have been a big, <laughs> that would have been the real devil's work. Yeah. yeah. Past so, lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but before that, it was just questions. And I'm not here to say anything against the churches. The churches very much have their, their purpose and their function. I feel like they act, it's a learning ground. You know, it's a place to, it's a building block for spirituality. Now, but when you're not ready, it's, but here's the thing. When you feel the need to go, go. It's not someplace that, that you're meant to stay. It's a building block. It's a mm. stepping stone. It's like going to school and staying, we'll just say like the first grade. You don't stay or kindergarten. Yeah. And I'm not saying church is kindergarten. I don't want to be conceived like that, but it's like pick one of the grades and say, okay, I'm just going to stay there and never grow. We're meant to grow. And we always build off of every thing that we're in. So if you, if you're feeling like it's maybe it's not in alignment anymore, or I have more questions that aren't being answered or things like that, then it's okay to look out. And that's where I feel like a lot of people do. They, they'll find mom's work and it's answering questions because she had beautiful work on very Christian things, you know, Jesus and the Essenes and, and uh, you know, 
yeah, Jesus. I mean, that was wonderful. We're too bored. Christian friends. I mean, that's what they say. It makes it makes Jesus so human. They can identify with him now. It's not this God that they can't uh, um, familiarize themselves with and learn from. It's mm. it's not somebody who's preaching to you. It's somebody that's actually showing you how to live and how to be. Yeah. What do you think the role will be? You know, obviously we're moving into this new earth, this new energy. What do you think the role of the church will change dramatically as this shift is going on? Have you given that thought? It's a good question. My first inclination is to say no. Mm. I think mm. it's always there because we be. choose. And so for quite a while, we're we're choosing things that we're familiar with, and as long as that's Nece uh, necessary mm. for people's being then it will be there you know um it, it may be a long time before that completely shifts out but mm. i know I, I again it's purposeful it has a purpose well you 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 said it perfectly block. it's like level one or it's like kindergarten or you know grade school level one mm -hmm. it you know you, you have it maybe it's to show people there's a divine force. Exactly. You know, for me, I think it was, you know, growing up in that, I'm actually glad I had that experience because it, it made me um, believe in the divine, seek the divine, seek a relationship with God. But then that obviously developed and uh, matured over time. I, I think I went through similar to what your mom did where I just thought this doesn't make sense. And when I asked questions, I was met with, <laughs> you know, get back in your place and that real hierarchy of yes. control and dogma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, and that's exactly it. And that, not to say anything against it, but that's just how that works. If that doesn't work for you anymore, it's okay to leave. It's okay to move beyond that. Where I think sometimes you get people are given the impression that they can't leave that. If it's bad, you, you know, you're looked down upon if you do that. You must. You're the one that's in control of your life. You're the one that chooses the experiences. You're the one that chooses your growth. You have that, and seeing so that could be why you put it there for yourself, so you would have the strength to move beyond it when the time was right. Just make sure we started out with the alignment stuff. You know, it's just be in alignment with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If that's your feeling, you know, it's like, this doesn't work for me anymore, then go move on. That's mm -hmm. a huge signal. That's how our higher selves and our talk to us, our feelings. Does it feel right? No, then don't do it. Yes. Great. It's your Geiger counter. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, I, I, I think these things are really good to be discussing because often, you know, I know a lot of people watching have people in their family. You know, I, I was having lunch the other day with, with some of my cousins and they're still mm -hmm. very much in, in involved in the church. And I was just reminding myself, you know, I'm coming here with, you know, what I've learned, but you know, I'm not better than just, no. I'm just different. I've come to a different stage in my life and just because you're in level one doesn't mean i'm better because we often do that don't we we think well we're superior now because we've got the yeah. wisdom and we've had the awakening and they're over there <laughs> yeah and and the thing is oh, i must tell everybody they must all convert to my way of knowing and it's like we're not here to convert anyone. anybody yeah we're here we, we teach by example and that's what jesus said you you teach by example you, that's what he was doing he was just teaching, you know, it's like, here's, there is another way. You don't have to go down this road and that's all we do. But we, we teach by living, you live your truth. And if, if others are ready to go down that road, they do, but you're not here to convert. It's like, my way isn't necessarily the best way. My way is the right way for me. And that's what I want to teach others by example is that they follow the best way for themselves. It may very well be that. <laughs> So, yeah, absolutely. Is that our cue? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Is that our cue? I don't know if you can hear my dog. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't realize you had a dog. He's, oh yes, uh huh. <laughs> what sort of what sort of dog do you have? He's a um. They oh let's see what was it again a lab a Labrador and ah. a terrier mix. 
Oh, cute. How old? He is now three. Oh, cute. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea you had a dog. I remember we were talking about cats in our last interview and um, I would just shared the other day that that clip on Instagram um, about the communication you had with cats yeah. mm -hmm. being, you know, yeah. being able to communicate and, and, and we were talking about, you know, them be evolving as a soul, right. you know, because yeah. um, it's a, it's a pretty so remarkable. I'm doing with him, this is a different thing I'm doing with him. Um, Cause I've never had a dog. I'm closer to him than any other dog I've ever had. So it's like this really, really interesting relationship here. And what I'm doing with him is trying to, cause he whines sometimes when he wants something. I'm like, I don't know what that means. And so when I was like, okay, show me what you want. Send a picture, send a picture from your brain to my brain. <laughs> and, um, and some, some I'm going to get it, you know, I'm starting, he's training me very well. You know, it's like, <laughs> uh, one time I, when I did that, the first time I saw something red and I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means. And then he went and actually got it. I have these little Kong, a Kong thing and I put food in it and it's red. And that's, so now he went and got yeah. it and he drops it at my feet and I'm like, oh, so I, okay, I was getting it. <laughs> so I'm trying, I'm teaching. I mean, he he can pick up my language beautifully, but me understanding his language is different. I'm I'm working on myself. <laughs> yeah, I tell I tell you what, there is a lot to learn from having pets, and they've got a lot to teach us. Obviously, we're helping them evolve, but mm -hmm. they help us evolve. In yes, but gosh, they they I've got a an eleven month old puppy, and I've got you know, I came home after going out for dinner this evening and I had yeah. my glasses chewed. <laughs> so the, the, the glass. In the, those days. In, in, yeah. <laughs> they do grow out of it. I so will tell I, you. <laughs> my yeah, first, was... but isn't it amazing? You know, my, my first thought was not about the glasses. It was, Oh, I hope it hasn't gone into his yeah. throat. I thought, I hope right. he's okay. But you, you have that, but you know, you, you learn to let it go but they've got a lot to teach. <laughs> yes. Yes. Was your mother a pet lover? She was, um, she liked animals. She really did. And when we were younger, we had animals and she was probably closer to them. But when she was on her own, she didn't, she didn't have any herself. We all had enough animals. So, so they're there. But um, I think one cat one time, she says, cause we're out in the country. And so there's some cats that come around and, um and I think that one she was kind of adopting but otherwise she didn't have any you know later but we always had animals and you know yeah there's she a was an animal lover but <laughs> I think there there's a yeah. there's a beautiful photo of the two of you actually that I stumbled across somewhere online um uh, and I think it was during your Australia trip and I think you're both cuddling a koala bear yes. somewhere in Australia <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was at Gold Coast, the um the oh, the Corumban Sanctuary, I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wildlife exactly. Sanctuary. Yeah. That's yeah, right. That really nice. mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've gone out to the kangaroo and all that. That that one they have you just walk among them and they're just laying on their walls like, oh my God, they're like dogs. Yeah. <laughs> On and they sleep a, they they sleep a lot actually they're very I don't know if you got to go to the Australia Zoo when you're here which is um Steve Irwin's zoo that he no, that he put no. together it's a no. if you if you're in Australia again it's 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 an amazing right. um what they've put together is incredible um um what was I gonna, I I had something I was going to ask that was um it'll come to me. <laughs> it comes to me <laughs> while we're on the subject we're talking okay. about animals uh, animals yes yeah it'll uh, come to I, me yeah and i think we may have a, a cool thing about animals if i haven't said it before is um some people have asked about um animals illnesses and things like that you know when they're sick and it's like oh we did talk about that before because you're Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And how it can, and I found that fascinating. I'm so glad you said that because I hadn't heard that before and it, it, it made a lot of sense, you know, and then that whole thing just was so clear to me why it happened. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and that's what you just have to look at it, and and they'll and then they'll clear up right away. But it's they're just reflecting our stuff to us. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, that's what the role is. I mean, you come in to be an animal. I mean, that's why many times animals are guides. They're actual guides mm. because it takes that level of a, a spirit, I think, to be willing to do that. Mm. Do you I'll, think, I'll... and I know I was going to ask you this question. That's what I was thinking. You know, I know your mother taught us that, you know, time is existing. It's not happening at the same time, but it's existing at the same time. And obviously we're experiencing this reality right now and past and pu future are just perceptions of the human mind. But if we're to kind of look into the context of the way we see life, do you think it's possible that someone could have, say, a human incarnation and then come back as an animal? Or does it not kind yeah, of work that rather way? Rather than come back, see, that's where you say it's all existing at the same time. Mm. We have the life we're doing right now. We have another life. Like I know, I, I saw in a session where I was a mammoth. Okay, right. a woolly mammoth. Okay, so I'm having a life as a mammoth right now. I'm having a life maybe as a rock right now. I'm having a life as, see, look at it that way. They're all happening and we can access values from their, their experiences. We're all learning from each other. So if you look at it this way, rather than this way, I think that makes it a little easier to understand. Yeah. These lives are all happening. It's existing. It parts in, of they're existing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Simultaneously. And we are looking through them you know we have this experience this is the one we're conscious of right now in a session in a hypnosis session qhht we are becoming conscious of another one that's where we dip down into one of the other experiences um but where all of them are feeding each other as far as learning and experiences and things like that so um it's just this is the one we choose to be conscious of at this point does that make sense uh, yeah, you okay. described it perfectly. And I think a lot of people are going to understand that. And I'm glad you put it in simple terms that people can understand, because I know that can be quite convoluted, that whole thing about well, That's time. where they finally gave me that visual of it's this way. Look at it this way. Like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's perfect because, you know, when you give examples like that, you can just go there in your mind and just yeah. say, okay, it's like, it's all happening. It's all stacked on each other, life after life after life. And you can access, yeah. you know, I know your mother talked a lot about the Akashic records and I kind of, that it comes to me as you're saying that it's kind of like accessing a different record, you know, in the, in a library, you have those little, um, I can't remember what they're called with the little cards and yeah. you flip through the little cards. That's what they, the card catalog, I think. Yeah. That's what I'm kind of getting with these lives. So they're all there. Mm -hmm. And it's just like each incarnation, you're just looking for which one to access the information. Exactly. Yeah. They're going through that filing cabinet. Okay. Mm. But in there, and they have keywords though. Like it's like, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm when you're having a QHHT session, they're going to pick out the one that's most relevant to your life now. Yeah. So, cause like we've had so many lives and you can go to any of them, but it's like, which, but why, you know, if they, it's just fun to know that, but if we really want to get some work done, how about we see what's relevant to now? What do we need to learn from? And that's where the higher self was picking in there. It's going, okay, I'm going to pick this one. Let's say it has keywords or anything, something, you know, it's like, okay, it's going through that filing system. Okay. We're getting this one for you to look at because it's very similar or whatever. It has things that you're working on from then or whatever. There's some reason. And that's, that's our job is to find, okay, why, why did you show this life? You know, what's that all about? What are we trying to learn from that? Mm. And sometimes it's a different perspective. We need to see it from a different perspective. Yeah. It's so, it's, it's such a, uh, everything we've st spoken about. I, I think this has been a great conversation today and I, and I can't <laughs> wait to do it again. Um, as always, because we, we, we always go somewhere completely different every time we chat. And I love that. Right. Uh, right. And I think people enjoy these chats when they, when they, they sit back and they listen to it and uh, hear the, uh, hear what we've got to say. That's great. <laughs>